Are we up? Another block, yes, we're on to block number four or five. I don't know what we've got here. I haven't been counting. used just now is this one. It's called uh, Arabiki Yamato. It's a kind of gum Arabic glue. I think in English it's called mucilage. When I was a kid it used to come in little plastic bottles like this with an angled top and you would smear it over the stuff you were doing. It's very wet. We can't use it to do the gum to copy paper because it would just make things too shriveled up. So that for the, doing the job you mentioned in the question here about the two kinds of papers together, we use a spray glue for that. And this is the same gumpy I had yesterday. It's really crumbly. We can try and make it peel, but I don't think it's going to work. Let's see. People were disappointed yesterday because I didn't even try to do this. But let's see. We can maybe get a peel. Let's try it. block we've got here today, you can see the general outlines. If I pop up Jed's original, where well, here's the original, bingo. And you can see the block we've got here. It's black here, but it's not going to be black in the finished print. This is going to be the gray, gray brick red. On the temple over there, there's two there's a brick red for the temple itself with a deeper tone on top of it. And this is the, the block that's going to give the deeper tone on the temple. Kind of a dark brick red color. Yeah, not a great peel, but uh, acceptable. Let's get this stuff out of the way here. This is the block we're doing now. It's going to be deeper tones on the temple, bits of tree leaves and stuff, and the texture on the walkway. Let's get to it.
Okay. Freezer, uh, the paper out. Yes, paper's out of the freezer. Thank you. I got a, I had a good shower this morning up there, and I remembered to take the paper out of the freezer. So thank you for the reminders. There was a couple of reminders even before the stream started. Thank you for that. Oh, it's chilly here today. Chilly, chilly. The door is closed. I don't know if we're going to hear any shoes or not, but the door is closed. I can't, uh, I can't have the door open right now. All right, let's go. Uh, today also, I forgot to mention, uh, if you're going to listen for shoes this morning, it's probably a waste of time. Today's a national holiday here, so most uh, normal office-type places are closed. And based on her clothes and her her shoes and stuff, I would guess that the, our shoe lady is a person who works in that kind of an office. So I doubt we'll hear her going by today. It's the holiday today. I think the easiest translation is Labor Day, I guess. It's not quite the same thing as Labor Day in the West, but I think it's the same concept. I don't know. So it's a three-day weekend here in the Saksa, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Most three-day weekends are, uh, long weekends are Mondays. It's Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but uh, this one's different. And we're, there's something that will be happening this weekend that's really of interest to us on this block here, on this street. There's a new uh, restaurant, not a restaurant, a new food place has opened up. Uh, one, two, three, three, three three doors, four doors down from us here. Uh, we've talked about this before, actually. There was a, <coughs> there was a, an older guy who lived here just by the time we came to this place. He was an old tax accountant. And he closed his business, and it was just shuttered for the first three or four years I was here. Then some months back, renovation and construction started. He must have passed away. Either the property was sold or, or leased out or something. And some, a group of Korean people rented it out, rented it, to do uh, some kind of, they said, Korean temple food. And they opened their business, this was a few months ago. As I mentioned, they opened their business and they closed three days later. They did their little test market and thought that they weren't going to have enough customers, so they just closed up. And it's been shut for the past few months. Uh, a couple of a month or so ago, we saw some activity there. People came in, looked it over, and we saw a bit of construction work. 
and they've been getting ready over the past couple of weeks and they opened the last night and I guess for this holiday weekend they're gonna this is gonna be their big test of their business and what they are is they're called uh, Arirang Hot Dog I think this is, this is becoming quite famous in Tokyo at the moment it happens here in Japan all the time there's some new kind of food that people uh, line up for eagerly and for some time, for a few months, for a few years, it goes crazy and people line up all around the block for it. It happened with Krispy Kreme Donuts a few years ago. They opened an outlet in every corner of Tokyo and there were lineups around the block. And now it's back to normal. These guys are trying to be the next big thing. It's Adidas Hot Dogs. And they've got so far six or seven or eight little corner shops in Tokyo and their newest one is right here on our block and we are worried about it because going to their website you can see their videos that they're showing from TV programs and stuff showing lineups around the block and they're trying to promote this you know this is the next big thing come and do it doesn't matter how long you have to line up and it's three doors down from me and there's a restaurant on one side of them and uh, their little theater is on the other side with a very, very small entrance to get into that theater. And if this new Korean street food thing takes off and there's going to be lineups, it's going to be a real trouble for a bunch of us on this street. Because the people lining up don't give a crap about anything else. They'll just line up and block off entrances to anything. So. Anyway, they finished their construction last night. They had to do quick open last night. And I saw a few people out there trying the hot dogs and uh, this long weekend now will be an interesting test. We have a bunch of websites. Has somebody linked it already while I've been talking? See if I can find it. Let me try and find a quick pop up of that website. Ariran Hot Dog. And here they are opening up all over Tokyo. Here we are. This is some kind of Here it is. This is a quick link I found just now. These are the people that have opened up. Two doors down from us, three doors down, depends how you count it. And uh, we're worried about a few things. One is the lineups, and second is people walking around with street food and then coming into shops. And yes, the paper is out. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Going to get five thousand reminders every day. No, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> You can see what we're doing here with these marks. This this block is about reflection marks on this on the street here. So I'm just cutting the same orientation. I'm going to cut all the bottom sides, and I'll rotate the block, cut the top sides, cut the left sides, whatever. Instead of rotating the block for each one of these little marks, just cut them in batches like this. I mean, these are reflections on the sidewalk. These do not need to be carefully, delicately cut exactly the same way that Jed. They've got to be, you know. A mark on the sidewalk here so we have a fair amount of freedom to slash and cut here yeah famous street food just outside a woodblock print shop just what we need you know sticky sweet street food Anyway, whatever, see how it goes. 
my guess is it'll become troublesome for a while and then just fade away. Also, be curious about their business model, who they intend their customers to be. You know, this street, being here in the middle of Asakusa near Sanzoji, is jammed with uh, tourists. Of course, start to finish, morning till night. And do most tourists who are walking around Tokyo want to eat Korean food? I don't know. Is that the, is this a good business model? I don't know. I see on their website that this company has a, a major. Their, their main office or something is over in Okubo, which is the other side of Tokyo, which is like, it's like a kind of Korea town, like you have in Los Angeles. But here in Asakusa, I don't know.
You think about that place, the hot dog place that's open just down the street, you know. And, uh, it was empty really for quite a while. And uh, I was curious what the rent they were asking was, so I went to a real estate website and found, uh, found the, the basic public asking price. I don't know what they finally negotiated, but the public asking price was, I think it was 540,000 yen per month, which is just about, just over $5,000 per month. And it's for a tiny space, an absolute tiny space, like a six mat room space at the bottom and one up at the top. So what they've done is it's a front window where people order their hot dogs. And most people, I think, will just walk down the street eating it. But there's a small room upstairs where people can eat in if they want. Well, $5,000 a month, you know. Oh my God. What do you got to do in business selling hot dogs? To pay that kind of rent and then pay your food and pay your staff and pay everything else. And I don't know. We couldn't survive at that level here. We're really lucky to have got in you know, in the earlier time before the tourist thing totally exploded here in Asakusa. We've got a, a reasonable landlady who doesn't doesn't gouge us. And,
So you can see what we're doing with this thing. Rather than rotate the block for each little thing, of course, I went through the south side of each one, then went through the east side. Now I'm going through the north. And we should actually, that's, that should be most of it here. When I say I'm going through the north side, I'm catching the west and north, the other one I caught the south and east. Here and there, popping out a triangle, which is where my chisels will, will enter for the next step. Sorry not to catch everything here, excuse me, quite a lot of conversation, sorry. Are there questions? Tend to notice, no, nothing, nothing at all. It's because I don't do this 24 hours a day. I do a bit of carving, do a bit of printing, do some typing, do programming, come back and do something else. But even when you're doing just nothing but carving for a long time, it's just not something that's stressful. There's no... You know, I'm cutting wood, but the blade is very sharp. I'm cutting a little bit at a time. There's no heavy stress. <clears throat> and over the years, the guys who developed these techniques worked out, you know, the bench is at a bit of an angle. My, my wrist is straight. There's no crimp or cramp in the wrist. We don't, neither I nor any, any of the workers that, that live here, I've never heard of, of problems like that. What I'm doing now, someone's asking me, what am I doing now? I'll pop up the image again. I don't know if you can see at the very bottom of the image here, there's a bunch of uh, patterns in the, in the street, the blocks, paving stones. That's what I'm carving right now. I know, I know, I know, I gotta get a new brass handle for this thing. I know, I know, I know. One day. Gotta set a good example for here, right? found an email in my box this morning when I was checking just before starting the stream, you know, I'm trying to keep on top of the order processing and stuff like that. Cameron's off for a, for part of what will be his annual vacation. His, some of his family members are, are here in Tokyo, so he's off for them. And uh, he's been, you know, one of his normal jobs is he does all the order processing, the orders come in, and he makes sure they're safely ensconced into the software. 
checks them, double checks them, make sure it's okay. And he sends them through to Ome. The people in our Ome office then do the actual physical shipping and stuff. And there's lots of orders right now. It's uh, coming up to, you know, what we call gift season here. We put up our gift page and people are ordering prints. And some people order just one, that's fine. Some people order a couple. And every now and then we get an order from somebody who orders maybe 10 or 12 of these prints. He gives us uh, an address, a list of friends' addresses and says, hi, please here, send these out to all my friends. Little note inside saying who it's from, that kind of stuff. And we get these orders quite a bit. And people come back and do it again and again. They, they like our print, their friends have enjoyed receiving them. So it becomes a habit for them to do this. Anyway, in my mailbox this morning, I see an email from, from one such customer saying, Dave, Dave, what's going on? And I'll, I received, he says, he received a note from one of his friends saying, hey, I got this little gift and I couldn't tell quite who it was from, but I figured it might be from my friend, such and such a name. So this guy's asking me, wasn't there notes inside these prints? He asked specifically that there should be a note inside each print saying, here's a little present from Japan being sent to you at the request of such and such a person. Of course, all these gifts should have such a note inside. It's normal procedure to put notes inside. But this customer had received a, man, man, uh, a mail from his friend saying that there was no such a note. Anyway, long story short, this guy is asking me, Dave, please check what's going on. Are all of these things sent out without notes? What's going on? What happened? I can't check on it just yet, because over in Ome, they're still not there yet. It's still early in the morning. It's 8.30 or something here. But it's looking like there's been a cock up at this end, and it's looking like the order went through to Ome without this request to put the guy's name on it. So a dozen people have received these Christmas prints and they have no idea who they came, who the presents came from. This is a real, if, if this is what's happened, this is a real, real screw up here. And I, if that's, once I've confirmed this, I have to write back to this gentleman this morning and try and figure out how to fix this. The prints are already gone, if that's the case, with no messages. I can't claw them back from the post office. So it looks like a real disappointment for a customer who's been working with us for years. We've taken care of them well, and now maybe we've made a big screw up here.
and ooh, boom, 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 I know it's out there, I think it's a gas delivery, you guys swing in gas tanks off a truck, so it's a gas delivery for the oyster restaurant next door. Yeah.
have we got it all? Let's take a quick look. We should have got north, south, east and west, I think, of all these lines. Might have missed something. Let's try and catch it if I have. Come here. A couple of lines here. Can you see anything that's missed? No, I think it's all done. Let's uh, pop it out. <laughs> if you look at the lines, that's the borderline is not going to be cut here. That's on a different block. It's just here for reference. This will be cut in a few minutes. What we're just looking at is this one right now. Let's pop it up. Get a hammer up, but don't panic. This is no great smacking. So we have small light tapping here. We're not going to be doing any powerful smashing. So just. Don't panic, it won't be so noisy. There's a bit of light tapping to clear it on the outside. Make sure I don't erase the corner. Okay, bit of light tapping here.
something off the truck cycles today. I don't know what's going on. Maybe I guess with a long weekend coming up, all the shops, the beer deliveries and stuff, everybody's stocking up maybe. Long weekend won't really have too much effect for us here. Most of our, you know, people coming here are people on, on vacation. They don't even know it's a long weekend, we're travelers here. The long weekends, although the town is busy, the streets are busy out there, it doesn't affect our business so much here at Mokohanka. Difficult to get into restaurants, there's lineups everywhere. That's all the damage I can do with the chisels here. Gouges. I think that's it. Let's get into the middle there. This is not a wonderful piece of wood, you know. It's one of the old pieces of cherry wood we've got. We're, we're resurfacing old blocks. 
but it's really not great. It's got a you know, bad pattern up in one side. See this pattern under my finger here? <laughs> if we put this pattern on big wide areas, if we had the sky with this pattern, we'd be in trouble because it reproduces sometimes on the uh, on the sky. It's got Nashi Moyo, a Nashi pattern. I don't know why Nashi. And then down here in this corner, this was a really hard, this corner of the block was really hard and chipped away really easily, just fractured. So this is not great wood. Uh, we used it for this piece because it's just this rough pattern on the, on the uh, ground. And if bits of it were harder or lighter, if I happened to chip a little bit, it wouldn't matter so much. But I wouldn't use this piece of wood for something that was important, like a wide sky or, or you know, colors and textures that were going to be visible in the finished print. It's all a bunch of these little tiny leaves. There will be nothing visible from the surface of the wood. So, so not a great piece of wood. This is the time consuming part of this one now. Cutting those lines was easy. Cutting everything out of the middle is going to take more time. So. Part of the work, you know, some of the job's more interesting than other parts. This part is not really interesting in that sense, but it's all part of making finished prints, you know. At the end of the end of the process, when I'm standing there holding the prints in my hand, you know, it will be fun to have them and hold them. And this part of the process is just as necessary as anything else. You know?
those of you who are watching the stream a couple of days ago, Wednesday, you know, it was a bit different. We were sizing upstairs, and she was on. Actually, I didn't do any of the work. She was on to do work all by herself. She's the paper that we were using was for her prints, not mine. And uh, the only reason I was there was just watching, give her some coaching, give her some help. You know, but, uh, one thing that you didn't see after the stream was finished, and she did all her paper by herself. I came downstairs, she finished off the stream. And that was it for me. I spent the rest of the day in the shop. But when I went up there later that evening to do some work for something else, I went into the kitchen area where we do the sizing, and I'm like, holy crap, look at this. And she had, uh, she cleaned up, of course, after she finished doing the sizing job. She had, you know, washed the, washed the, couldn't wash the brushes and the, the trays and stuff like this. And I couldn't believe what I saw. Like she had washed this stuff as though this was going to be used in a hospital environment the next day or something, you know. She had scrubbed and scrubbed and scrubbed way more than I usually do. And uh, I, I don't say this as a criticism. It was wonderful. It was fabulous. But oh my God, it was clean. I almost like I can't touch it again next week when it's my turn to do some more sizing. It looks like I'm going to be working with brand new pans and gear and everything. And I guess this is good. I mean, we don't want, you know, I mean, we're not eating from that stuff. But we don't want, you know, mold and dirt and stuff in our paper. And uh, it's better to keep the stuff really clean than not so clean. It's obviously better. But wow, she took it to a level that I've never seen before. <laughs> I can't imagine how much hot water and stuff she must have used, too. I don't even want to think about the bill, but whatever. But that kitchen hasn't been that clean in, uh, ever since we moved in, I'm sure. You know, so. Questions, questions, what have we got here? How to determine if a piece of wood is overly hard? Yeah, I do, I, I test it with the blade. I, I cut in one corner, an obtrusive corner. You know, we just test it around. You can see now here, that same pattern, that Nashi Moyo pattern. 
there's no way this block could be used for a flat area of color. That pattern, that speckled white brown pattern would come up in the color. It won't matter here because this is all going to be thin, grayish, watery lines on the ground. Yeah, the standards have been raised to cleaning standards, but I don't know, you know, I can't, uh, I'm not going to do what she did, spend a half an hour scrubbing and boiling all the pots. It's not necessary, but uh, it looks nice to have a clean once in a while like that. Even the other day, when I was doing sizing myself one evening, Ishikawa-san was coming and she finished her printing work and she washed her brushes beside me as I was sizing. I think I told the story the other day, you know, so... And I was just doing my sizing and she started washing a brush and like five minutes later she was still running hot water washing the brush and the hot water is just running out of the heater running over the brush and down in you know and I was torn I wanted you know Ishikasan don't you have any sense for the energy you're wasting and put some hot water in a bowl and use it to wash the brush instead of just running the heater but these younger ones, they don't have any sense of that. They just use the resources as though they were infinite, you know. If I, if I bitch too much at them about that stuff, they just think I'm a little fart. You know?
Here's how it comes out. You know, just got a bunch of islands left. It's a lot of picky work, but the end result is there. Let's keep at it. I hear water running from upstairs. Did anybody hear Shibasan? Uh, um, Shibasan, did they come in already? That's too early for them to show. What time is it? Well, 9.15 already. Look at that. My God. 9.15 already. That must be the sound from Shibasan upstairs. She must be upstairs washing a brush or something. Get ready. been at this over an hour. I thought I would have guessed it would have been about 25 minutes or something. Time flies when you're having fun. So where are we at? Today's Friday. Who's in today? It's in the shop it's Teiko-san, I think, and I'm not sure. It might be Koizumi-san. I don't know who's coming today. We've got a full party schedule, so I hope there's a bunch of them. This section finished this morning. He <laughs> he found chance on that. Did I waste a lot of time talking or something or showing something? We had no show and tell. What's the schedule now for the streams for the next few days? Today's Thursday. Tomorrow I'll be here absolutely sitting here carving this same block. It's going to take a few days to do this one. Not a few days work, but a few, a few days of mornings. If I had nothing else to do, this is not even a day's work, this block, of course. But uh, when I'm only at it a couple of hours a day, then it takes a few days. All right, this strip is now done this part, you can see clear. Missed a bit there, I think. So the schedule will be the uh, same. Friday, tomorrow, just continue this block. And I guess Saturday, I can't see that far away. I don't think I have any sizing requests from the staff, so I think it'll be just carving now for the next little while. I think I've got enough paper to feed all the printers at the moment. I'm not quite sure. There is actually some show and tell stuff underneath my bench here, so uh, there's no time now for today for this, but uh, maybe tomorrow while we're doing this stuff, if you want to remind me. There's a few things we can show. Nothing spectacular, but a couple of nice, interesting things. So if you remind me tomorrow in, in good enough time, we can do a short show and tell tomorrow. Look at that. You feel the hard spot. It's like a rock. Right there. Feel it? Every now and then, this cherry just has really, really hard spots in it. If you're not careful, you can just bang and smash your chisel and waste hours of work.
spot there. Well, it's pretty much time for me to get out of here, I guess. I'm not sure where the staff is. They should be arriving soon, if they're not here. And a bit of a quiet, non-nothing-happening stream day today, but I've got to get some work done, and that's what we've done. Shoot away at this for an hour or so. Okay, where is everybody? What's going on here? 926. Nobody's showing up yet. I hope this is not some kind of joke. Anyway, I do have to get out of here. There are parties at 10. I'm not sure if I'm on duty for them or not. No idea. Okay, sorry, I missed a bunch of stuff here again. I'm sorry. Live stream from John's print party tomorrow. That's a good question. What time is it? John's here. Is he in the morning or is he here in the afternoon? No, wait a minute. He's here today, the show. That's a good question. I don't know when John is here for a pink party. I thought it was today. Let's have a look. Pink 
Print Party Bookings calendar check. November 23rd. I thought it was here at 2.30. There it is, John Baker, today at 2.30. Which is like 1 o'clock in the morning, New York or something. So I'm not sure. I'll see. I'll see what happens when John gets here, and I'll check with whoever else is in the party. Maybe we'll do a quick gorilla stream. No promises. I don't know. But at the moment, it looks like he's scheduled to be here today at 2.30 for a, for a microwave party. If he's game for it, and if the other person's people in the party are game for it, we might do a quick gorilla stream. I don't know. That's 2.30 Tokyo time today. No promises. I will see. No promises. Anyway, i got to get out of here. It's 9.30. Back here tomorrow, same time, same station. Thanks very much, guys. Sorry for the you know, bit of a mixed up quality of the stream here today. Where is the staff? <sighs> see you later, guys. Bye-bye.